Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander Epic. That's right, it's Epicosity once again. That's Lady Epicosity entering your dinner party serenely from the ladies loo and wandering over to you with a wry smile on her face, only then to let out a small queef. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Uh, it's custom 4v4 action this afternoon. I really should start again, but I'm not going to because that's not how I roll. Um, it has just invalidated my ad policy now, though. I have to have <laughs> ad restrictions on. Oh, why do I do it? Uh, I don't know, but it's custom 4v4 and it's going down on Settons. Dun, dun, dun. Settons clutch. The infamous, the one, the only. Uh, people also, actually, three people, I think, getting in touch this week, weirdly, all at the same time. It's almost like it was orchestrated, asking me, when is the UEF background coming back? You're sick of the cyber one. Well, I'll tell you when. Uh, when Bitcoin reaches 100k and not before. There you go. Send it. Send it, please. That's enough of that jazz. We've got no other news to bring. We can go straight to the action. It's going to be an eclectic mix of Joes and Pros. I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how we're going to get on. Cheng. Ka-ching. Sentence clutch. We know what we're dealing with here. This is Team 1 up here at the top. This is Team 2 down here at the bottom. Going first for Team 1 rearguard air position and winner of this week's amusing name award it's boomstick juicy there he is in this season's very very fashionable fabulous vivacious violets we just turn the uh, game sounds up there a little bit that's better and uh, going UEF as well interesting decision opening first land over to the cliffs now in the south team member number two for team one it's Rissinio uh, Rizzi Rissino Rissinio 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 that's simple Aeon Going Ferrari Red, opening first land. Over to the causeway now. It's none other than my good friend, GFY Deponi. Here he is, going cyber and ugh, in baby blue. On the causeway as well. Interesting decision, opening first land. And then over at the beach, we have Ryan, 1991991. There he is. Maybe he was born in 1991 and he just uh, wanted to write it again, but then forgot that there's an extra one should be in there. But anyway, here he is, another Cybran in baby blue going first air. Team two now down here at the bottom left. Regard air position. First of all, it's none other than the one, the only, one of the original pro players. It's Voodoo going Aeon. How very sensible. And Halley Borange Orange opening first land up towards the cliffs now for Team 2. It's Wah Wah Wee Wah. There he is. And he is going UEF in Spetsnaz Green going first air. Interesting. And then second land on the causeway for Team 2. Just starting to make his move now. He'll give uh, GFY Deponi a little breather because he's gone Cybran as well. So two ACUs of the same amount of HP. Uh, in mellow yellow and going land all day, as you would expect, typically there uh, for a causeway player. And last but not least, down here at the beach for Team 2, it's you pork pine, but we're going to call him porcupine because it's just easier and I need all the help I can get. Nelephantine Grey down here, going Aeon, opening first land and then going air all day over to the Hydro in the west so there we have it game quality at 93 percent we're happy with that balance that's pretty good going and uh, what have we got in terms of pro joe uh, assortment well team one there with two 1500s that's resinio and boomstick juicy we do then have a gfy de pony who's almost at pro level there at 1400 and then 1300 there for ryan over at the beach Team 2, uh, what have we got? We've got a 1600 and a 1700, the Wawa Wiwa and Voodoo, and then a couple of 1200s there, Lax Salter and Porcupine on the causeway and the beach, respectively. So it looks like the first to the mass in the middle will be Deponi, and he gets immediately to work on the wrecks down here. This, if you haven't seen my casts on sentence before, I've mentioned it many, many times. This is the right way to go about it. These, you would think, if looking at the reclaim values, you'd like, go after these first. Actually, you can get through these quicker, and if you get there before your opponent, you can hoover up the ones on his side of things first, and then go after these big wrecks. This is definitely the most efficient way to do it, and Deponi is in the middle a long way before Laxalter, so you can already see 
the uh, reclaim totals, the total mass there, 13, 14k versus 11k now in favor of Team 1, and that is all down to Deponi making a maneuver earlier and getting there first. Over to the far right, we can see a transport offloading engineer, so the little side island there for Rossinio. How does that... Uh, compare with his mirror on the other side. Wawa Wiwa still yet to get a transport out. In fact, he's working on one right now. Looks to be almost finished. Has he got the engineers standing by? He'll probably pick these three up, I would imagine. And then he will move on up over to the side island on the left of the screen. Over to the causeway once again. Finally, Laxalter gets in to Deponi's sphere of influence and opens up on him. Doesn't bother about any of the mass. He just wants to try and scare Deponi away now. Has he got any reinforcements coming in to assist him? Well, he has got some units far back here, but Deponi also moving in with some Mantis now. Lax Salter, after that exchange on 9,200 hit points, Deponi further down the scale there on 8,300 and falling with each continuous shot. We will check back in on the reclaim totals in just a minute. Checking up on the side island on the left-hand side of the screen. Three engineers dropped off there for Wawa Wiwa, and they get to work immediately on a land factory. No surprises there. Let's have a look at the naval side of things. Engineers prepping for Ryan in the top pond, but yet to start work on the first naval yard. We already have a naval yard in play over at the cliffs there for Wawa Wiwa, potentially... An important move there and a drop on the way on the other pond there for Rosinio. Chariot fully laden with, with what looks like six thistles on there, potentially. Is it thistles? Fervors, sorry. Getting all confused. Thistles being the T1 anti-air unit, of course. Black Salter and Deponi getting into it with ground forces as well now. Not just the comms right in the middle of the map. Deponi's taken a little bit of a battering. He's down to 5,800 HP. Black Salter looking considerably more healthy on around 8,000 hit points. Deponi also short on inbound reinforcements. Black Salter's picked up 3.6k, but Deponi's picked up 7k in reclaim so far. As long as he doesn't get picked off here, he'll be happy with the opening that he's bagged for his team. Let's check in on this little old drop, which has successfully offloaded those fervors onto the ground. Looks like he's going to go for a bit of a split here. Three heading off down towards the beach, and the other three heading up towards the causeway base up here. Sinio bagging his first mechs. That's a porcupine that's lost that, but porcupine... Already pulling his comm out of the base now to intercept. I suspect they're not going to have much more luck going straight after one of the air factories initially. It's going to cancel construction of a couple of planes and take the air factory down to about half health. But the three fervors going after mexes up here still alive. They've picked off two of them. They're going to leave the hydro. Interesting decision there and go to work on some of the T1 power gens. Bag himself another mechs up here. One further left now. Engineers being dispatched to try and kill that further with a reclaim order. Rosinio keeping it moving though. Can he get any more kills on some of these resourcing options? This is a T2 mechs. It's going to be a little bit hardier. And it survives long enough to get taken out by I think one of the T1 bombers there from Porcupine. So eventually they get that little drop under control. Pony has backed up away from the center. Crucially, there is one Salem left. That's about a thousand mass sitting there. And of course, this little mass field that's been generated from that battle they've had recently, currently under Laxalter's control, although Pony looking like he wants to come up and snag some of it. And uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about progress in the bottom pond. We have a naval yard complete over at the side island there, for Rossinio. Lots of engineers queued up on the cliffs ready to assist that. There we go. But I'm wondering if they can all reach. They can all reach. They already have one frigate heading on over here, but this could be bad for Team 2, Porcupine and Laxalter between them yet to get to work on a naval yard. They could be 
gifting control of the bottom pond over to Team 1 if they don't get started very, very quickly. First couple of frigates in the top pond out from Wawa Wiwa, slowly heading north bit by bit, although this one's stopped now right in the middle. We're not going to get any automatic denies there for Team 2. One naval yard already in play for Ryan. A second one completes just as I'm talking about it. And plenty of engineers in here to assist construction. We also have a uh, sonar system and a scuttle torpedo launcher and even a T1 anti-air unit. So, uh, or T1 anti-air emplacement, I should say. So, Ryan, well set up naval-wise already. What's going on here? A little counter-drop attempt from Porcupine. Takes some fire from a shard attack boat. Don't often see this. A little bit of uh, attack boat business. This is a vessel you don't see an awful lot. Aeon, attack boats, good anti-air, but oh my goodness, how many HP left on that chariot? Eight hit points, and that successfully makes the drop. Literally one or two more blasts from one of those attack boats, and they would not have made that, but as it is, as it stands, all six of those fervors on the ground, they're going to bag at least two of these, I would say, maybe even all four. Engineers scrambling from the cliff edge to get over here and reclaim these... Artillery pieces. Down go two, three T2 Mexes, and soon to be all four. That's a lot of mass. That's a very successful drop. One T2 Mex over here survives. Rossinio, very unfortunate not to shoot that down. That's a solid, solid bit of play there from Porcupine. Back over to the causeway. Dupony's got himself a T2 engineering suite on board his commander and immediately throws down a couple of Cerberus turrets. Getting some assistance from his Mantis there. Newbies, if you're watching, this is a, a skill that the Mantis have that lots of people forget about. You can assist construction with the Mantis. They can't build things for themselves, but they can assist things. They have woeful build power, but when you've got enough of them together they can make a real difference. Alright, where are we in eco now? Team 1 strolling ahead. They're about 8k up on their opponents in total mass accrued. But uh, generated eco, Team 2 is now ahead by the looks of things. Comfortably by about 20 mass or so. Probably not Hurt by that little successful drop there from Porcupine. <clears throat> Two armies merging on the causeway. But neither player committing wholeheartedly into the engagement. Dupony using it as a bit of a buffer to advance further up the causeway. This is where... That last position was with the Cerberus turrets we saw him working on. And he's moved forward another notch, thrown down another point defense, and that will bag the mech sitting right in the middle of the map there. Now, we do have naval presence for Porcupine in the bottom pond. One, two, three naval yards, soon to be four. Five and six queued up shortly behind it. What we really want to see now is some assistance from the causeway players to pick a pond and try and give their teammates the edge. But perhaps it's still a little bit early. 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes in. Nice to see we haven't had any early ejections yet either. All players still in residence. T2 upgrade on the way for Laxalter, who wants a... Uh, an option to hit back against a pony or indeed just to lock this area down and stall his advance. Doesn't want to get point defense creeped out of existence. Rosinio using the attack boats as small scouting vessels just to see what's going on down here. Actually hardier than they look. <coughs> Tiny, tiny little vessels, complete with only anti-air weaponry. And 
and we're up to T2 Air for Rossinio, but T3 Air for the main air players. Let's take this moment to see how Boomstick Juicy is getting on, on pumping out those air superiority fighters. 13 so far on the field there for him. And who's handling it there for Team 2? That would be Voodoo. And Voodoo, a little bit behind the curve. Four ASFs there for him. This this guy, in case you're new to Subcom and to Faf, this is one of the OGs right here, the original gangsters. I don't see him play that much anymore, but it really warms my heart to see him getting into games. He would have been uh, comfortably up over the 2000s once upon a time, but he's much more of a casual player these days, I think. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it means a lot. It's sentimental, certainly. When you see these guys who have been around forever still giving it some, giving it good. And he really was one of the, the masters. He was one of the guys who would at least get into the finals of tournaments and sometimes win them. <clears throat> and Pony just dropping back slightly with his spam on the causeway. Falling back to that earlier position. Wondering if uh, that forward turret, which I think would have been there, has been taken out by attack missiles or something. Starting to see some T2 presence on the causeway from Laxalter and from Deponi. Although Deponi has gone for Viper mobile missile launchers to begin with. That is a serious recon action from Rossinio. Mass T1 scout planes. Epic recon mission. And uh, you can see they haven't got Omni coverage as yet. So this will be affording them some good intel. Many of them are actually going to survive it to get a good read on this base down here of Voodoo. Answer is not many, but enough. Oh, there's another lot coming, look. And has that given Juicy some confidence? Now, is he uh, aware that he is ahead in the air game? It looks like he's thinking about testing that hypothesis, bringing his air superiority fighters out now over to Team 2's side of the map. T2 upgrade on the way for Voodoo. And things just very static in both ponds. And just generally quiet across the map now. 16 and a half minutes into the game. And effectively no one pushing particularly hard. Everyone ecoing. Get a real sense of a lull before the storm. Genuine, generally that means that we're amping up to something big later on in the game. Laxalter completes stealth upgrade on his commander. That will afford him some protection. Never a bad decision when you're playing Cybran, especially if you're up front. Why give your opponents an easy target? There's absolutely no need for it. No need whatsoever. What's going on here? Is that a Lumnar under construction? T2 transport potentially? Cruiser construction underway for Ryan. He's already got a couple of Barracudas out there, but most of the rest of his fleet is comprised of T1 frigates. Let's do a quick frigate count. 30 frigates for Ryan. Wawa Wiwa comparatively has 38. And he's just rolling out some T2 units now. That's his first one, I believe. A Cooper torpedo boat. But he's gone straight to T3 HQ. Are we at T3 naval for Ryan? No, we're at T2 still. So, a potential advantage there. Should we start seeing battle cruisers being brought out? Wawa Wiwa 
is currently producing about 307 mass per tick. That's definitely in the upper ranges, if not top producer, I believe he is, by a comfortable margin. Next highest voodoo maybe on 280? In fact, generally, things look pretty strong from the, the top players on Team 2. Team 1 a little bit off the pace there. Boomstick Juicy on 240, Rossinio on 209. In terms of total mass generation, you can see that there's just a little kind of 20, 30 mass advantage, sometimes 40 in favor of Team 2, who are up 2k overall in total mass. And uh, that gap likely to widen. Well, finally, we're getting some action underway, and it's in the bottom pond as Porcupine goes after the side island belonging to Rosinio. Rosinio's got a lot of naval yards here. He has got a Vespa and a couple of Exodus class destroyers. Torpedo one, uh, torpedo bombers, sorry, no, regular T1 bombers have been harassing over the skies, but Juicy, paying attention, brings in his air wing and shuts that down. Needs to get back over here and mop up the rest of these antiquated T1 fighters, some of them even out of fuel here. This should be a short engagement. Voodoo over here, well aware of the situation, but probably also well aware of the fact that he hasn't got the fighters on hand to comfortably win that. He has got another group over here, and he looks like he's rallying them together over this side, but Juicy probably not going to hang around on this side of things for that forthcoming engagement. I think Juicy still has more fighters than Voodoo as well. So a solid naval attack over here. They've taken down three naval factories, one of which was the T2 naval headquarters for Rossinio. But I don't think they're going to hold the field yet. Maybe they are. Only two destroyers left here for Rossinio. We've got one more destroyer for Porcupine. All the rest, I think, are frigates with the occasional sub. No, two more destroyers over here. So actually, if he keeps up this pressure, they might be able to cripple this island here. And that could represent a win in the bottom pond for Team 2. Definitely not the time to take your foot off the gas right now. I humbly suggest. Transport away with what looks like six NGs on board. Where's that headed? Right in towards the middle. Is it going to be a second line of naval yards in the middle, maybe? To help with maintaining the pressure. Rosinio fleeing as hastily, hastily as he can with those two destroyers, but those alumnars we saw, the T2 transports under construction earlier, fully laden with artillery looking for a drop option over here, and I would have thought Porcupine would have seen that, that flow, flow right over the top of his vessels there. And indeed, he has set up a fighter screen that as long as they don't pull too wider a patrol route... Oh my god, that's terrible timing. Would you look at that timing? He set the patrol up perfectly, but the timing of the drop was also perfect, and they're just going to sail right on in through the gap. And I think all of those fervors are going to make landfall, and indeed they do, and that's going to be some dead mass points. Engineers in the area of which there are many get to work immediately on point defense. Oh, but they're going to lose a lot of civilians in that. Fortunately, the splash isn't too big, so it's going to take several salvos. Engineers surging forwards, 
trying to get more point defense online. This actually could have gone a lot worse for him. Fervors roll up forward into range of the newly built eruptors over here. And in fact, they only lose two of the three mexes. He could have lost everything up there in that drop, but that was nicely handled. Let's check in on the top pond now as finally things kicking off between Ryan and Wawa. And on the face of it, at first glance, you've got to look, think that the advantage is clearly with Wawa. He's got bulwark vessels here with their massive shields and battle cruisers in the mix as well. Well out of enemy range, but well within its range to just blap vessels one at a time with those massive ion cannons. That is not a battle that's going to go Ryan's way, I fear. So this is two very good passages of play in the water for Team 2. Potentially spelling a win. And uh, yeah, when you win both ponds in Settons, chances are you're going to win the Causeway as well. Because that is pretty hard to defend when you've got vessels on both sides giving you a pounding and not in a good way. Wawa doing exactly what he should do. Just got the frigate fodder out in front. Keeping that Neptune out of enemy range and just using it to pick off those frigates. Now we are starting to see some vessels in the water from the Causeway players. Laxalter with some Salem class destroyers causing problems for Deponi's forward base which is nicely arrayed. He's got the wall sections out, this little bottleneck he's constructed here meant to funnel. Although I guess we would have thought the funnel would have been better going the other way but <laughs> it's pretty good nonetheless. Decent shielding up. Support commanders desperately trying to keep this in play. And he has got a little Gunther battery back here. Three Gunthers in place, which will force Black Salter to keep these destroyers moving. You can see they're already pretty badly damaged, some of them. This one down to just 800 hit points. Cheeky little strategic missile sub, just noticed up at the top of your screen there. Plan B. Strolling out into the ocean. Boulders Brass, maybe going to head on up here, wait for a nuke to load and then take out the side island. <clears throat> a RAS on the way for Ricinio. But look at these totals. Wawa Wiwa over at the cliffs there for Team 2. 544, 560 mass spiking up to and you compare that to uh, Rossinio, who's in the other cliff position there for Team 1. He's putting out just 365. That's a massive, massive difference. Now remember, there's only 100 ranking points in between these two players. But Wawa Wiwa has ecoed incredibly hard. And you, you can see it. I mean, if we take a look, every mech at Tech 3 fully supported with mass storage. That is what you call maximizing your economy. Rossinio, admittedly, he took a bit of a battering on the side island over here. And he's still working on getting these up to T3. But uh, all of these are still at T2, these highlighted ones. So he's got some way to go. Once again, the two navies in the top pond tangle. Cormorants in over the top from Ryan. Presumably looking to get a kill on one of the Neptunes, or the Neptune, sorry. There are two summits in the battle now. This looks really bad if you're rooting for Ryan. They managed to deplete the shield coverage with those torpedo bombers. There are cruisers in play here. So they don't really get much more than one pass. 
second pass inbound this time from Juicy. He's going to run screen as well for his Storks. Best to surely take up out the shield boats to begin with and then go after the big boys. And that's exactly what he's doing. But again, a couple of passes, that's all he gets. Voodoo now sending in his fighters. First glimpse looks like he might be short the numbers to win this air battle as he engages Boomstick Juicy over the top of these two fleets. Ryan actually has a couple of battleships of his own out here now. Neptune getting into it with them. But look at that massive air win even commented on by Boomstick Juicy to his allies. That is huge. Air superiority now with Team 1. And they need to pump out as many torpedo bombers as they can to try and stall this attack, which has worked its way all the way to the shipyards of Ryan and his beach here. Three summits now in the area. And that lead galaxy taking an absolute battering down to 11,000 hit points. Oh, things heating up nicely here as we approach the half hour mark. This is a crucial target here for Wawa. He's got his frigates and destroyers right in up against the coastline here but he should be sending everything he can to try and take this down it's just produced another battleship Ryan needs to be careful here he's got his comm in the water he might be close to the shoreline to get away from torpedoes but of course there are summits here and it wouldn't take much for all four of these battleships to open up on him on the land and that could be the end of his game real quick little group of frigates over here just slowly working their way up this humongous line of naval yards that Ryan has been working on with this group of engineers up here strategic launch detected hello nuclear launch out from that submarine that's being torp bombed Got its missile out just in time. Is it going to get anywhere important? No, it's not. Wah wah wee wah. Ready for it with the anti nuke missile loaded in the nick of time. And he'll be sorry that uh, that didn't work out. Would have been better maybe to land it over here. There is an anti nuke, but it hasn't got anything in it as yet. Nice little nuclear strike over there. Would have dealt a real dent. A real blow to Wawa Wiwa's eco and indeed his uh, production power. He's got three T2 naval yards over by that island. We have had a little bit of an engagement over here, but it's sort of fizzled out. Galaxy class battleship has been unloading on the front line of Dupony. Now in danger of Racinio and his skimmers. Those Torp Pommers get in one solid attack run and it sheds about 30% of that battleship's HP. Rosinio not going to repeat the bombing run as the Navy and all of its assorted anti-air of Porcupines is just a few clicks away. It's a pretty solid Gunther battery from Dupony, who has uh, been a bit quiet. He's been pumping out support commanders. He's been holding the line, putting out a ton of artillery pieces down the coastline here, trying to defend Ryan. Now, where's that nuke coming from and where's it going? It's out from Voodoo. And that looks like it might be going over to Rossinio's side island. Oh, that's going to hurt. That is going to hurt an awful lot. 
Be interesting to see where he places it, how many of these naval yards he takes out. That is the naval headquarters in exactly the same place, I believe, as to where it was before, just rebuilt. Just as Rossinio was really getting going, ready for this forthcoming battle, he's about to lose his production facilities, maybe? That looks like it might be quite deep. He's wanting to get the mass options up here. All of the naval yards survive, but the engineers assisting them, crucially, have not. They have gone up in a cloud of smoke, and not only that, of course, they didn't get anywhere near killing the T3 mexes up here. They literally just got clipped. That's it. He would have been better off landing it in here, would have got all of these core mass and taken a few of these shipyards with him. But hey-ho, hindsight's a beautiful thing. I'm... Uh, million observer and not in the heat of battle very easy for me to criticize something that I shouldn't dare do against the mighty voodoo who's played more games of Sopcom than I've had tellings off from my wife which is quite a lot believe me so Rossinio with a little bit of a lucky escape there it might not feel like it as his engineers get to work on rebuilding there, but it could have been a lot worse, I uh, suggest. I like what I'm seeing here from Dupony, who's brought his support commanders off the causeway and is now just got a, a harms creep going on, slowly eating its way in towards this fleet. And the summits here, absolutely defenseless against massive underwater torpedo attack. Oh, he's rolling in with another one. That's going to go badly. That one's badly damaged with 7,000 hit points. Well, well, we are going to lose another battleship there. So, Dupony stepping it up, trying to defend Ryan. Ryan, who's lost two of his four core mass pieces and has had to drop back over here. And actually working on a laser, he's got cloak already. So, it looks like he's about to use his... Commander defensively against this fleet over here. Ballsy stuff. Well, it would be ballsy if he wasn't a dirty cyber and made himself invisible. Pure cowardly play. Wah wah we were now trying to defend against this harms creep by taking out these support commanders that are building new ones. Dupony gets to work on pumping out more flak. Loses one of the support commanders, but elects instead to uh, withdraw the remaining three back onto the causeway and out of range of those torpedo bombers. T2 upgrade on the way for Ryan, having completed the laser. God, this feels good. Isn't this a nice epic? Stuff kicking off all over the place. This is why we love this game. Nay, this is why we adore this game. Sheer unbridled mechanical mayhem. Oh, T3 Naval HQ for... Black Salter so close to going down. Will he make it? Yes, he will. Might cost him a few vessels. But they've crippled T3 naval production there for Black Salter. There are two operational Galaxy class battleships already in play down there for the Causeway player. But that still is a moderate win in the bottom pond for Rossinio, who's hanging on in there. He seems to be a little bit light on vessels. He's got a, a decent contingent of three battleships here, but they're quite spaced out. And he's got a, a couple of destroyers and a, a few destroyers, sorry, and a cruiser. But he's not got all of the associated clutter that you want to be seeing. The mix of other vessels, the frigate fodder, if you will. Dupony having a whale of a time underwater. 
as you do, hoovering up all of this mass. Summits pulling away from those harms to which they can do absolutely nothing. I suppose they could ground fire them. I think with the summits, the AoE is enough to damage those, but it's an imperfect solution. While well, we were trying to deny Deponi the ability to produce any more and indeed to hoover up any more of that mass. But uh, a moment of appreciation for what Team 1 are doing today. here. Deponi expanding out from the causeway. Juicy has a whole ton of support commanders stepping in now to assist Ryan. But we have another nuke out and it's another one from Voodoo. Where is it going? It looks like it's targeting maybe the side island once again or potentially the naval yards up here. We have another naval headquarters up by the main base and that is up to T3. So we do have some redundancy but this one down here is still at T2. Where's the nuke headed? Well it is headed up here and it looks like it might be going for the T3 naval HQ. Any anti-nukes in the area? Not on your Nelly. And... Nuclear Blast. Bosh! A little bit of obligatory screen shake there. Strategic launch detected. Has to be said, the Aeon nuke is the most underwhelming, I think. Of all of them. Any of the devs want to do something about that. Another nuke out, and it's from the Array. And I use the Array very deliberately of strategic submarines there from Wawa Wiwa. He's got a ton. He's got like seven of them. And that's going after oh, all the newly built defenses from Deponi. Oh, he's torn a big hole in that. Support commanders withdraw from what is another group of torpedo launchers. This time T2 being worked on by support commanders from Wawa. So Wawa kind of setting up his own forward base of operations now. And even bringing in engineers to work on some new naval yard spam further up. Boomstick Juicy completes an experimental. We did see an experimental complete a while ago, and that was Laxalta's megalith down here. That strutted its way all the way up the causeway. We've got another nuke, and I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of these in the not-too-distant future out from Wawa and sending that straight in over here. We have engineers hurriedly working on strategic missile defense. Nuke's going to sail past that. Is it going to get into the backfield? No, it's not. It's going after this, but it gets tagged just barely by this anti-nuke defense over here. Wow. Nice play. Very unfortunate there for Team 2. But what is this? We've been so busy. We haven't had a chance to look at what these guys are building up in the backfield there. And Juicy just building... The penis of doom. No worries. There it is. The Mavor hammering away. Like Pornhub. Getting to work straight out of lockdown. <laughs> it's a family channel, Guile. Oh no. And Voodoo's working on a rapid fire artillery. But it's been scouted. And it's been taken out by the Mavor. Ouch. Another nuke out from Wawa. Now, if he's going in the same place, this one will get it again. There's Strategic two anti-nuke missiles in that silo. It's not. It's dropping short. It's going after Ryan, who managed to pull his commander out of the way. But he's lost almost the entirety of his main base. He has got this other... Section over here. Another nuke out from Wawa. This time going in towards Deponi. Deponi's comm, I imagine. I don't know where he is, but he's not in the forward base. Apologies for the Strategic launch quantity of 
moving in and out, but it's necessary sometimes. That one gets taken out. Another one out. This one, once again, going in over here. Novak satellite just completed. This silo still without an anti-nuke. Has he brought the nuke impact site far enough away from this SMD? Or is it going to get snagged again? No, he has. How much will it kill? Everything. That's a perfectly placed nuke there from Wawa. Taking out almost everything of what was left from Ryan. He's got one very badly damaged reactor. About 700 hit points left there, but everything else just, just annihilated. Meanwhile, we check back in on Voodoo, and his base is getting torn a new one by that Mavor. Probably won't get a chance to launch another nuke. Tell me that's the support commander. Yeah, it looks like it. Lots of support commanders under torpedo attack up here at the top. I kind of want to stick with what's going on over here because this is crucial. Voodoo just getting clobbered by those mini nuclear armed shells. The next one lands in the same place, which it doesn't. <laughs> Huge gap in shielding though. Just waiting for it. Whoa. Voodoo looking very vulnerable. You can see the amount of shields that he's working on. Fortunately, the firing accuracy is just not working for Juicy right now. He's not getting the hits. That's a nice one, though. And that's a T3 Air HQ that's down. There is another one over here. Is that sorry? No, that's the land HQ that's down. Misspoke there. I fail once again, but the Mavor changes up, and now it's going after Wawa, and it looks like it's going after Wawa's com as well. The com does have personal shields, got about 19,000 hit points there on top of the base 15,000, so it's a pretty chunky com, but he's only getting to work on shielding now. That's pretty late. He has been doing wonderful offensive work. Fortunately, he's got lots of kennels here to assist com production, but it's going to take him a while. And it's not going to take the Mavor long to chew through all those kennels either. And that personal shield on board the commander almost depleted already. Gets the big shield up around his com, gets straight to work on another one. Things going over here. Support commanders still alive for Deponi. And the harm still getting work done. What a wonderful piece of kit that that is for the Cybrans. What they uh, lose in turtleage on land, they certainly make up for in spades on sea based turtleage, which is, let's face it, where all turtles belong, ultimately. Wawa Wiwa looking like he's in a very precarious situation here. 5,000 hit points left on that commander. Trying his best to get as much shield coverage up as he can. But one more solid hit and he is done and dusted. Mavor shells incoming in steady intervals as they do. Look at all of the shield jets he's putting up, trying to keep his commander safe. Gets up another one. It's a constant battle, though. We still haven't had an ejection. We're 45 minutes into this game. This is pretty rare, even for a Settons. Usually someone's gone down by now. He's not going to hang about. He's going to get back under shield coverage. Oh, what are you doing? Going for a wander, not at the right time, my friend. Where is he going? Oh, he's making a run for it for the pond. He'll be fine right up until here. It's going to take a very lucky shot, though. 
Juicy doesn't have a lot of time. Kill Eco, says Ryan. Has he retargeted? No, they're still raining down. Well, well, we were just about to get to safety. That shell impacting on the mountain range. Further over. Oh, but that's very close. And there's another one inbound. Oh, no way! And there it is. First ejection to a very lucky hit from Boomstick Juicy. He couldn't have landed that any better. Practically hit the comm with the shell and now we've got inbound Scathis fire as everything transfers over to Voodoo's control. All Settens matches of course pretty much played with full share on these days. Where is that Scathis? There it is. Lurking by that little inland pond there. And that is a lot of extra firepower raining down. Fortunately, the shields that while we were just started constructing a moment ago to keep his comm safe, now letting Voodoo retain some of that infrastructure, <laughs> infrastructure for just a little bit longer. Tongue not working today. I could say something incredibly rude there, but I'm not going to. Fill in the blanks. All by yourself. And this is not looking good for the causeway position from Deponi. Vessels in the Bay Area here giving this main base a battering. Deponi shows up with a bug though. Voodoo gonna move in with his air forces. Juicy lying in wait ready for the impending battle. Is it going to kick off? And who's gonna be the winner? Answers in the comment section now. Do not wait to be clever after the fact. Who is gonna win? Well that's a terrible engage there for Voodoo. Planes just Lay in wait. Wonder if they've got bad intel on this corner of the map. They finally get going. The two air forces tangle. Meanwhile, the bug left unmolested to go and help defend this shoreline. Big old row of Gunthers trying to do the same as well. There's a lot of battleships in here. And Juicy does win the day. Not really surprising after that engage. It didn't go too well for Voodoo. And neither is this. Base war. Another experimental completed for Deponi. What is it and where is it? It's further back here and it's a megalith this time. Let's have a quick look at mass totals. So De uh, sorry, Voodoo after inheriting Wawa's eco is on a whopping 1.1k. Deponi though, look at that output from all of his support commanders of which there are many. He is up to 704 mass per tick. Juicy on 468. Rossinio on a pretty poxy 291 but his main base is effectively destroyed. Look at this TAC missile base that's gone up on the cliffs here. So much has been going on, it's nigh on impossible to keep up with everything. So apologies for that. Scathis having obliterated what was left of Wawa's old base has now retasked over here towards Voodoo's main base. Voodoo's main base is pretty spread out. That will afford him a, a limited amount of protection for a while. Voodoo's comm down here under shield coverage right at the back away from all of this. Uh, but look at how much mass he's floating. He can't spend that massive eco he's got. He can't funnel it into units fast enough. They're still in 
the lead in the top pond and they've certainly won the bottom pond. Rossinio's base is in bits. The main base for Deponi looks like it's about to follow. Base holding up over here just about. Crab at the cliffs will help with that. Battleships unlikely to be able to win an exchange with that megalith once it gets into range. Should finish off that galaxy class battleship without any difficulty. Pony's actually pulled his commander all the way back here to Juicy's main base. How many kills on that Mavor now? 220, not too shabby. Actually less than I thought. How's the Scathis doing? Well, the Scathis is dead because there's... Is that counter-artillery fire? Well, if it is, it's been taken out. I don't know where it, it came from, but that looked like T3 artillery shell. And that could be absolutely huge. Maybe it's actually... This TAC missile battery down here. Answers in the comment section below if you saw that. You can always rewind, of course, and look like you were paying attention. Let us know down there, guys. Always appreciate you weighing in. But if that's the case, what a crucial little firebase that's turned out to be. Having taken that Scathis out and alleviated the pressure somewhat on the main bases down here. But there is, of course, still the little issue of the Mavor. And, of course, all of these Novak satellites out from Juicy. Four of them over here, forcing all of these support commanders from Laxalter into the water. And, in fact, Laxalter has taken a bat battering. He's on 5,500 hit points. And that's with the stealth on board the comm. Deponi still fighting the good fight against these UEF vessels which have more or less cleared out everything over here for Ryan. Ryan's still in the game but ceremonially at this point. Megalith getting taken down by some restorers there from Voodoo. Where's the defending air force? There it is inbound from Juicy. Will they save the Megalith? 6,000 hit points left. They will save it from the gunships. And the battleships have actually been thinned out massively. But there is a megalith just over here from Laxalta. Completely healthy one as well. 52 minutes gone. Team 2 in complete control of the oceans as far as I can see it. But Team 1 battling hard with their standoff tactics. Their base wars, Juicy with the, the Mavor and the satellites fighting the good fight. And now Voodoo forced to deal with the unenviable, unenviable, that's not even a word, unenvi, unenviable, unenviable, the task that you don't want to do. <laughs> And that is build relentless quantities of shielding to try and keep his base in play. He's moved his commander up over here. What? Oh. Oh, it's the insta-build of the GC at the bottom of the screen. He teleported support commanders down here and then sacrificed them. I believe, if I've got that right... And just insta-produced the Colossus, which is now I, <laughs> in danger of catching Voodoo's comm. This game's redonkulous. Well, he's not chasing the commander down for now, but he's happily ionizing all of his power grid. Voodoo still floating all of the mass in the world and just incapable of spending it right now. In come some strap bombers that he was hoarding as well as a few restorers to try and deal with it but the attack pings go down on voodoo's com team one have spied it and immediately the novak satellites react voodoo needs to get under shield coverage and do it fast he agrees hangs a right turn will he make it <gasps> 
No! <laughs> Literally just on the edge of the shield. And Juicy picks up the kill. What a wonderful snag there. Purely by chance. Just happened to stray into the range of the field of view of one of those satellites. And someone on Team 1 was paying attention. But look at this. Rosinio has been evicted completely from this area. Porcupine now advancing up the straight on this side of things. Can he break this base over here with this GC? Maybe. Remember, air dominance very much in the hands of Juicy over here. Juicy and uh, Deponi fighting the good fight, trying to keep the last two players at bay. And remember, uh, that's a really annoying little desync. Desync that didn't show up the first time I watched this. So that's the second category of desync. You get some desyncs that show up every time and other desyncs that show up intermittently. Admittedly, in my experience, the desyncs that show up intermittently don't tend to alter anything from the game as it was played so that's good but still a mild irritant nonetheless Colossus under possibly the largest T1 bomber attack I've ever seen and he is going to die to that. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. No way to fight back against this. No anti-air. He is just going to get wrecked by 335 T1 bombers. Maybe a bit less. Maybe 300 because, let's face it, these weren't in the fight. But wow. And now Juicy's going to send those into attack. He could clear out the rest of these vessels down here. Where is he going with them? That looks like exactly what he's going to do. One cruiser in there, which will rack up some decent numbers of kills before presumably getting obliterated. I just don't see... Yes, they've got all of the territory in the world, but I don't see... How Team 2 are going to break this bit by bit. They're getting picked apart from these satellites. Mavor shells still landing down here, I believe. They are Mavor shells. That's up to 283 kills now. Seems like it's slacking a little bit. Must have landed an awful lot of shells on top of shielded areas. We're just getting more Novak satellites going up all the time. And another Scathis now for Deponi. A new quantum gateway. Further back. To accelerate his support commander production. And the first volley lands. If it's your base, you say, ah, not again. Give me strength. They just don't know what you do at this point if you're on Team 2. Causeway looking very bad at the moment, thanks to three fatties strolling their way down it. Megalith underwater for Deponi. Using its own torpedoes to harass this small bank of torpedo launchers belonging to Laxalter in the top pond. Laxalter going to pull back what ground units he has over here. Might as well launch the attack missiles that he's got. Those are about to go the way of the dodo. Strategic launch detected. Haven't heard one of those for a little while. And this time it's out from Porcupine. A 
Ryan and Rossinio over here. Ooh. Sails overhead. Could have got a double con kill there. But let's face it. He's not clairvoyant. But that's an awful lot of dead support commanders. Oh my goodness me. Whoa. Deponi. Oh, and I didn't check what his eco was on before, but it's down to 196. It was way up there in the 700s earlier, if you remember. He just lost the Scathis and the lion's share of his eco. And that is the danger. Was there an anti-nuke in here? There were four anti-nukes. And they were expecting anti-nuke coverage to come like they've been coming all game from the backfield there from what was Voodoo's old base. That's, of course, gone now, thanks to the Mavor. But right from the edge here, very sneaky little play there from Porcupine. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Like, sneaks one in just around the corner. And that is a bitter, bitter pill to swallow for Deponi. What a wonderful, wonderful strike that was. Can't get enough of that. But will it be enough to turn this one around? I suggest not. That horde of T1 bombers has moved on to harassing Porcupine's main base. And they're just going to get work done all day with that quantity of T1 bombers. Laxalter doing what he can. Over here. Trying to tidy things up. But one factory at a time, just getting torn apart by these T1 bombers. They're slowly tidying them up, but of course, the damage is pretty much already done, and they can't do anything about those defense satellites. Porcupine's com can only sit back and watch the carnage unfurl and unfold from the uh, relative safety of the seabed. Juicy looking like he wants a, a piece of this Air Force over here. Not sure he's got that much more in the way of ASFs. Well, maybe he does, actually. Let's do a quick count. 151 there for him. Lax Salter. Yeah, 53. It's a 3 to 1 job going on there. Timing it. Trying to get in behind those fighters on their patrol. Doesn't manage to do that. But it should go his way nonetheless. Fat boy still on the march down the causeway. Gonna face some up front direct fire from assorted T1 and T3, but the T3 are mere bouncers. Getting in underneath the shield though, doing some damage to one of them. But the main base, or the original base, I should say, for Laxalta now in pieces. Deponi just marching all the way up under the water there with that megalith. 33 kills to its name. There's not much in the way of naval production going on. In fact, not much in the way of production at all going on for Laxalta now as he's trying to fight a battle on all fronts. He has got a bunch of support commanders in the water here. Looks like he might be making an attempt up the side here. That'd be a good time for him to do it as Deponi tries to re-expand back out to uh, Rossinio's old base down here. Another wave of torpedo bombers, though, inbound. Or holding position now from Juicy, who's also targeting the side island over here with the Mavor now. All the engineers in the world getting to work on a resource gen. That is ambitious. I mean, I suppose it doesn't really matter at this point in the game. And that Mavor can reach anywhere. So what's proximity at this point? Just got to try and build something where all of your build capacity is. But Porcupine with a paltry amount of mass compared to Laxalter. And also nowhere near the power required to build that thing at a constant rate. Laxalter unhappy about the Mavor. 
Oh, but do not ease off the gas now. There is another shell rolling in, but that looks like that's going to go wide left, maybe. He's actually dropping short as he's going after the support commanders that have been driven back into the sea. They're trying to keep the uh, torpedo bombers at bay. There's a lot of flak over here, remember? So that's kind of the safe position to run to, but... One solid place. Mavor Shell should be all they need to put this game thoroughly to bed, I think. They've got no way to take that Mavor out. They are pulling in a, a ton of mass on Reclaim here and there. And actually, overall, thanks to what they've harvested from their friendly bases, they're up overall, Team 2 on total mass, but I think you can all appreciate the position that they're in now. It's pretty meaningless. I remember once upon a time when the Mavor was just insanely accurate. That was one of its many strengths, but that has been removed. Given a little bit more firing randomness, but maintained the range and power, and there goes the power And look at this. Juicy. Playing juicy. Unashamedly. Setting up shop right in the middle of Team 2's territory. Porcupine. I got it halfway done. Not enough, my friend. Even if you'd managed to get it completed, I don't think you'd have been able to get enough shields together on the island to save it from that Mavor. Just not a lot of build space over there. Oh look, another experimental about to die to a thousand T1 bombers. <laughs> and with the reprieve that they've earned, Rossinio, Ryan, Deponi, all steadily expanding. And air control with Juicy and Team 1. There's only, surely only one way this game can end at this point. T3 upgrade on the way for Laxalter. 50% done there. It's a support commander. Where is um, Porcupine? Still hasn't moved. Despondently looking at the seabed amidst the wrecks of his former manufactories. Support commanders once again trying to get established over here, but once again going to take a royal battering. A lot of bombers going to die to flak on their way past. Can they get a good old chain reaction though against these support commanders? Oh, Mavor shell will help. Yes, they will. Wow. A nuke does land. Where did that nuke come from? That must have been from one of the submarines or something. Maybe this one down here. Knew it was under threat from these barracudas, perhaps. So, Deponi's expansion plan set back once again. And that megalith, it got up onto the shoreline here. It's obliterated three of the naval yards and it seems to have just sat here for a while as has this summit why isn't this summit firing back is it on hold fire can't actually uh, tell unfortunately it's like they are accepting slow inevitable death Huge quantities of spy planes out now as they search for the commanders. Storks out over here. And they've certainly discovered Laxalter's comm despite its stealth and its cloak. All of the torp bombers pretty much go up in the comm explosion, which surprises me. That's underwater. A 
attack pings down on top of Porcupine. That's where the other one is. And surely the remaining bombers will go to work now. Fat boys ground fire the water. And achieve nothing, but the torpedoes will. And there we have it. One hour, nine minutes, and a clean sheet for Team 1 who lost both oceans. That's something you don't see every day on Settings. What a remarkably unusual game, and yet I wouldn't call it a comeback. Don't call me a comeback. I've been here for years. Yeah, I'll rock the LL Cool J. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. That's nothing. What are you going to do about it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's a comeback. I don't know. Give us your two cents in the comments, guys. But they were at least on parity on eco and are up for a lot of it, Team 1. They were just burrowed in, turtled hard. They had the advantage all the time with the standoff tactics. Team 2 tried to get established in it down here with Voodoo. He tried to get a rapid fire artillery. That didn't work. The Mavor took it out before he could get a chance. Um, yeah, they just showed how in the, the long game, when you've got enough support commanders on the field, territory doesn't matter. And we've seen it many, many times. But a beautiful, beautiful bit of play nonetheless. MVP, I'm, I'm going to have to give it to Juicy with the uh it's tough i mean Deponi did great work holding the line here keeping ryan in it for a long time um you know with his support commanders and what have you but i'm gonna have to give it to juicy because the mavor was clutch it was crucial his airplay was on point voodoo the original gangster never really got any kind of air dominance going juicy had that in his corner the whole game and uh, that really won it for Team 1. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. Don't forget, if you feel so inclined, you can check out the Patreon. It's a mere dollar a month. There is some 35 casts on there. I have another one ready to go. I haven't casted it yet, but I'm going to try and get to work on that tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, check it out. Why not? It's a, what do you, I mean, what do you spend a dollar a month on, really? Nothing, right? Like That buys you nothing. Literally nothing. Go and check it out, guys. And uh, I will see you there. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.